I was on the airplane back from Copenhagen, and I read this article, and it mentioned hygge. The Danish people have this word that describes all of these things that I just experienced and loved. And she was like, oh my gosh, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but it's, it's hygge, hygge, hygge. 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 I mean, in England, we use the word, oh, this is cozy, this is nice. But as soon as you say to a Danish person, oh yeah, cozy, hygge, cozy, they go, no. And maybe they don't want to tell you what it is. But they have something, the Danes. Hygge has been called the art of creating a nice atmosphere. It's been called cocoa by candlelight. It's been called everyday happiness. Hygge is actually also self-care. And I think that it will make your life better and I think that you will be happier. Hygge is a word that has a lot of associations that come with it. When you think of hygge, you think of candles and cozy socks, but I think it's more a feeling. I think, unfortunately, it spiraled out of control a little bit. Like, we had nine books published on the, on the subject of hygge. It became like a trend where it's, it's really not. For me, hygge is not a very good thing. I found out in all these years that hygge is sort of conservative. There is a dark side to hygge because hygge usually happens in smaller, tight-knit circles. Hygge, you, you don't do you don't do that with people you don't know. There there is a sort of a un, unseen wall around it. It's their hygge, not mine. You know, I don't think that Hugo is the answer to everything, but I think it's a balancing force. It's saying something to us, the very fact that everyone's so interested in it, is saying to us that actually we're out of balance. And that's why I think that this word Hugo suddenly is so very important. Because we, we suddenly realize that we don't have it and we can't find it.